Hey guys, Caleb and Jeffrey here from the Moment team, and today's video is all about the iPhone 8 Plus versus the iPhone 7 Plus's camera and deciding, is it worth your hard-earned money to upgrade and get the new device? So last Friday, the new iPhones came into the office. Is it Christmas? Uh... Let's go, what up? And after RJ was done playing with them, Caleb and I took them out and did some tests. All right, we just got our ticket for the ferry. Now we're going to get in line. So to start the day off, we decided to hit the ferry, which just leaves right out of Seattle. And we wanted to test the detail and the dynamic range of these cameras. Whoa, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Did you hear that? Okay, so to start off these tests, we decided at first we wanted to build a rig. So what we have here is our dual iPhone rig. iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone 7 Plus. We will be shooting at the same level, so all the shots are pretty close to accurate. If you want to know what this is actually made from, it's a company called Shoulder Pod that makes this wooden part. It's like the base with the handles. And then these are just two random iPhone like mounts. Whoa, there was a, there was a delay in this one, watch. When we got on the ferry, one of the first things we wanted to test was the detail both of these cameras were able to capture. The iPhone 8 Plus definitely did retain some more detail than the 7 Plus, especially when you zoom in on a cityscape, you can kind of see on the edges of the building, the iPhone 8 Plus is definitely sharper. The next image we captured was using the telephoto lenses built into both of the phones, and we noticed similar things. Uh, the iPhone 8 Plus still a little bit sharper, but both pretty great images. The next test that we wanted to do was dynamic range. This presents itself as a nice area to test dynamic range. You have the bright outside and then followed by a bunch of shade kind of like randomly underneath that overhang. So seeing how each of the phones handle dynamic range will be a proper test. So between the 7 Plus and the 8 Plus in dynamic range, there's not too much of a difference, but again, the slight advantage does go to the 8 Plus. So before we got off the ferry, we also wanted to do a quick video test. So we shot in 4K, 30 frames per second on both devices. And I'm glad we did, because we noticed a, a bigger difference than we did with the photos. Um, the iPhone 8 Plus exposed correctly by itself, mm -hmm. much better than the 7 Plus did. Kept in those highlights, they weren't, weren't as blown out. Yeah, the detail in the highlights for sure on the video, it was a lot better on the 8 Plus. Video upgrade, in our opinion, is noticeably better yeah also with the video on the 8 plus you can record natively 24 frames per second thank you apple finally um, you can also record 4k 60 frames per second which is incredible all those frame rates we didn't want to stack it up against the iphone 7 plus because this doesn't have it only has 30 at 4k but we did do a 24 frames test go a little more So after we got off the ferry, the first thing we had to go get was a Starbucks, obviously. So we just got off the ferry. We got a bunch of nice tests done. Um, Caleb is being a little baby and we have to find him coffee. So we know this is a real world test and what's more real than you wanting to know how your Starbucks coffee looks on an iPhone 8 Plus. So we're gonna do a test of the slow-mo on both of these cameras. So the best thing we can think of is pouring cream into our iced coffees. And we added cream, and so we decided to shoot that in slow motion. <laughs> the iPhone 8 Plus records 240 frames per second at 1080, which is awesome. Um, the iPhone 7 Plus records 240 at 720p. And really, if you're shooting 720p these days, you might as well just not even shoot. The difference between 1080 and 720 in the 240 frames per second is a pretty big difference. Um, it doesn't look incredibly sharp. It's still your phone shooting at 240, but it is really good. So we got the coffee shot and we also did some skateboarding. We're here at the skate park and we're gonna get some slow-mo tests with the 7 Plus and the 8 Plus. Caleb's gonna try to not kill himself. All right, Jeffrey's gonna set up the iPhones to shoot in 240 frames per second. I haven't skated in a little bit and I'm wearing the wrong shoes, so don't leave any hate comments. All right, first try. All right, whenever you're ready. Oh, fourth try. Ready? 
Yep. At this point in the review, I think my opinion for the 8 Plus is if you're getting it more as a filmmaker, less as a photographer, it's totally worth the upgrade. All right. Well, that's a weird angle. Okay, portrait mode time. The iPhone 7 Plus introduced depth effect, and we wanted to test it against the iPhone 8 Plus to see if there was a big difference. When we were looking at the photos on location, we weren't that impressed. But now that we're seeing them here on the computer, we're actually noticing there is a big difference with the iPhone 8 Plus. The feathering on the 7 Plus did not do too well when there was a lot of detail in the background, trees, branches and stuff. It like had this random little edge. So overall, I think they both do a decent job at it, but the 8 Plus does a little bit better job at creating the better feather around the subject and making it look a little bit more natural. Wish, like, what you're saying Building on the depth effect introduced in the iPhone 7 Plus, the iPhone 8 Plus introduced portrait lighting. We're not sure about it. <laughs> Maybe if you used portrait lighting in addition to some some editing, you could get something that looks good. But I think out of the camera by itself, portrait lighting. Look at that. That looks. Yeah. This one, that looks weird on my face. Yeah. That one's not bad, and then that one's pretty normal. When looking through these options, it does feel a little bit gimmicky, but it's important to note that this feature is still in beta, so who knows what could happen in the future. Yeah, I think there's good potential in the different lighting effects, but right now, um, the first one, studio lighting, is probably the only one I'd use. Okay, so this is the pier I wanted to check out. It's pretty cool. So the next test we wanted to do was a color test. We found these kayaks that had really vivid colors. Um, bunch of reds, yellows, and blues. The goal of this is to see how natively the cameras represent the colors and if there's a big difference between the two. Overall, you could see a difference in the colors between both of the phones. It's not something that's gonna drastically make me wanna buy the 8 Plus necessarily. Some people actually even prefer a flatter image to start with, less saturation if they wanna do more editing, but it does look good, I'll, I will say. <laughs> if there's a gun to my head, I, I would say. <laughs> All right, so we're wrapping things up on Bainbridge Island, and now we're going to be late for a ferry. Cool. When we got back onto the ferry, we were able to get a depth effect shot that we were really happy with. I think with the depth effect in general, if the fall off is much easier, like a sky or a background that's a little more plain, it does a better job of processing the image and making it look more natural. Okay, so we're just finishing up a few more tests, taking the ferry back home. Um, everything's been looking really great so far, pretty evenly matched. But what we're really excited to test though later tonight are the low light capabilities of both these cameras. Can't zoom while recording? No, you can. It's just slow. For a more dramatic look. You want to be on the video now? So after we got off the ferry, we waited for it to get dark to do our final test, which was low light. All right, so we just pulled up to this donut shop that's open 24 hours. Uh, it's late at night, obviously the sun's down now, so we can test. Wait, what are we testing? The low light capabilities of the 7 Plus versus the 8 Plus. So this is the part of the video where I was excited to test because low light is a huge deal with such small sensors in the phone. So having the new technology in the phones, that helps with the noise reduction. Right off the bat, we did notice that the 8 Plus is exposing a little bit better on the really bright lights of the donut shop. So looking at these images side by side, you're able to see that the iPhone 8 Plus is really able to get that exposure a lot more under control. Whereas in the 7 Plus, there's so much detail lost in the shot. Obviously, we are shooting at a very bright subject, so this isn't much of a low light test. We'll go around the corner and do one where we'll really see the grain. Go a little more this way. Basically, we just came over to this wall that it's like the most bland light, um, kind of shining off from the donut shop, but it's basically this no like light source over here. This is really the test where we're gonna see the grain in the image. So in looking between both of these photos, you can tell that there is less noise in the iPhone 8 Plus. The iPhone 7 Plus, even around the face, does look a little bit muddy.
The next feature on the iPhone 8 Plus we wanted to check out was the slow sync flash. Basically it combines the quad LED flash and does like a slow shutter with a pulse of flash. It's such a big difference actually. <laughs> Essentially expose the background and the foreground more evenly. Not sure if you'll be able to see. Okay, so this is with the 7 Plus and you see it's your classic flash look. It's like he's super bright, the background's like nothing uh, but dark. This looks way more like a proper DSLR flash, like where there's actually exposure in the background and also he's exposed, but it's more even. If you are into shooting flash on your phone, this is a huge upgrade and probably one of the better features they put into this device. This wasn't it's, the best it's a example. Huge difference. Yeah, this is not This a photo, photo is just me quickly getting it well, because no. we wanted to go eat donuts. We so the last thing we wanted to test in low light was the video capabilities of both these cameras. All right, so when I'm setting the phones up to shoot video in dark settings like this, I'm exposing for the highlights, meaning I'm kind of tapping and bringing, up, bringing down the exposure to lock it. And what that does is help the image look a little bit more, like less blown out in the highlights and then keeps the shadows uh, less noisy too. Again, we did notice that iPhone 8 Plus retained more detail and color accuracy in these videos. All right, but is it worth the upgrade? The final question. Um, on a high level, I'd say yes. If you were a filmmaker or getting into video, the upgrade is definitely worth it. The better frame rates and resolutions, to me, are a big deal. Um, if you're into photos, on all regards, like, detail, color, and dynamic range, it's slightly better. And I don't think it's just worth it based on that fact alone. The big features of the iPhone 8 Plus that I think set it apart are the slow sync flash and the portrait lighting options. So in conclusion, Jeffrey, would you buy this phone or this phone? If I already had the 7 Plus, I probably wouldn't go to the 8 Plus. But like me, I'm coming from the 6S. So I think that's a huge upgrade to the 8 Plus and definitely worth it. There's your answer. Thanks so much for watching. We hope this review was found a little bit helpful. I thought he was ending sooner. I'm already punching. He still has the quad flash, all of you. You gotta look at the camera. Look. And they answered that clip of you going like this with the phones. You ran out of maple bars, huh?